After several showings at trade events, we now have the first public release of the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo. It's just an 8GB download miraculously, a drop in the water really next to the 100GB install reportedly listed on the retail box. Still, that packs a real punch, and you get about 45 to 60 minutes in this sample, and that covers Cloud and Avalanche's routes up to the first Maker Reactor core. You learn the basics of combat, evade laser beam traps, and end it all with a boss battle against a Scorpion Sentry boss. So we're in for a quick technical analysis. We'll be covering the basics of what PS4 and PS4 Pro are doing in the visuals and performance stakes, and then dissecting how Square Enix is using Unreal Engine 4 to recraft a true PS1 classic. And to join me to run through it all is Alex Battaglia. Hey there, Tom. I also happen to download this because I'm very curious about how Final Fantasy VII would look in the year 2020, and it's looking mighty good. Right off the bat, it's a very good-looking game in this uh, demo. Seemingly also running at a rather high resolution in comparison to other UE4 games we've seen on the console. Yeah, I'd agree. I, th I guess there's a reason for that. Definitely, as an Unreal Engine 4 project, there's a lot we can say here. The first thing to, to note is, of course, Square Enix has some experience with this engine already after Kingdom Hearts mm -hmm. 3. We saw it early 2019, and it came out on Xbox One as well there, whereas this is just a PlayStation 4 project. So, I mean, the numbers there were quite different, and if we're just going to focus on the resolution metrics and the frame rate stuff, what we had mm -hmm. there was uh, 1296p on PS4 Pro, and the base PS4 pushed 900p, but the frame rate was uncapped and wavering between 30 and 60 unless you use the stable mode on Pro. Yeah, and th this that game had a very different performance profile and targeting scheme, kind of this mid 1440p-ish resolutions on Pro and an unlocked frame rate, which this game, uh, Final Fantasy VII, another UE4 game, target something completely different, a more cinematic presentation with a target of 30 FPS and a general higher resolution as well, which, you know, UE4 this generation has been a bit heavy on consoles GPU-wise, I would say, so it hasn't yeah. been able to push up the resolution too high, but this is very high resolution. I was playing on the PS4 Pro, and you managed to count 1620p max resolution on the Pro, or at least for the general gameplay. Yeah, that's it. 2880 by 1620 most of the time. So mm -hmm. it does appear to have a max resolution target of 1620p, which, as you say, is more than Kingdom Hearts 3 had. Generally more than a lot of games uh, have been <laughs> on yeah. the Pro for UE4. Um, but you did notice dynamic resolution scaling, or at least a slight amount of it on the PS4 Pro, correct? Yeah, which isn't you know exactly alien to Unreal Engine 4 titles. And I, I guess I was surprised we didn't have it in Kingdom Hearts 3. But um, here, like obviously, we end with that big boss battle against the Scorpion. It is going down there. Pixel counts are coming in at 2304 by 1296. It's a drop, but it's you know it's still above 1080p there. It's still above 1080p, and a lot of that is still hidden by you know we've got temporal anti-aliasing running over the top, and so it's it's doing a good job and adds a bit of flexibility there, GPU side. Yeah, and then the PS4 kind of takes a slightly higher resolution than we've seen other PS4 UE4 titles running at this time with 1920 by 1080, if I'm correct. Yeah, you're correct. I mean, I did go for the same place. You know, the Scorpion Battle mm -hmm. would be the obvious target point and in that case we can see numbers go down to around 900p in some cases though I've noticed it's much rarer than the drops on PS4 Pro. You better be worth the money Merc, every last gill. That's very impressive because the kind of shading that we're seeing in this game, uh, like in regards to the heavy amount of motion blur on screen, the really high quality depth of field, uh, it looks like also some pretty great shadows, a lot of use of real-time shadows in comparison to other UE4 games which have gone for sometimes a more static approach. It's a very dynamic looking game and for it keeping such a uh, high resolution generally in gameplay and also, from my experience, very very good on PS4 Pro, locked 30 FPS, which is something really incredible. I think a lot of that, I mean, we, we both played it through, mm -hmm. and I think the first thing to, to note, obviously, is these areas are very kind of contained and linear sort of corridors. True. I mean, it's not the fault of Square Enix at all or, you know, a, a problem at all. It is just the nature of what just the, the game, game is. Just the game design. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is how the original game flowed through the, up to the first Maca reactor. And, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't really have it any other way. But that is the nature of it, and that's probably why we're getting 
pretty decent resolutions all round and a locked 30 FPS. Yes, it's definitely a breath of fresh air after the variable FPS we had in Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, hey, what's it doing now? Not over there, you. Yeah, and the same for PS4 base. I did not get the chance to obviously play that, but I noticed the, the extremely locked 30 FPS on PS4 Pro. How was the performance on base? So yeah, we're talking about Pro there, now PS4 base, exactly the same. I captured the whole thing nice. through our tools and it's just flawless. It's actually kind of annoying for us because we, we'd like to say something a bit more exciting, like, oh, here are the stress <laughs> points, here's where the engine's really being taxed. But no, it's been really well optimized. I'm, I'm happy to see it because I didn't finish Kingdom Hearts 3 kind of for this reason. It was just too variable. Too variable. Yeah, uh, that's exactly the thing I would say too. I, I much prefer a stable frame rate than a an unlocked unstable one kind of like our colleague john does as well yeah um i think the motion blur also does help a little bit you know there's... quite a bit yeah quite a bit and it's uh, interesting to talk about because in the in the cutscenes they do have a slight bit of full uh camera motion blur uh, mixing with per object blur but i noticed That's in right. gameplay to kind of make it so that you can visibly see more of the scene at times when you pan the camera you don't actually get any motion blur in this game only on the object so like when you swing a sword or in combat when characters move around which i actually think is a great compromise for visual acuity where you're because you're this game you're kind of panning the camera rather often and if it just turned to a blur like final fantasy type zero has in the past for example it would be less uh, visually appealing so i really like what they've done with the motion blur in this game. I think on that note, we should look at just the engine in general then. We got all the metrics out of mm -hmm. the way. We can just talk about how we felt playing the game. Yeah. yeah. Obviously the uh, original was based on very extreme constraints with the PS1 hardware. Comparing it to that, the you know, the 3D modeling there was extremely limited for traversal with those almost laughably low polygon blocky character <laughs> models. <laughs> yeah, they're very interesting looking. Uh, but yeah. in this, the character models kind of take full front of the show where you've got like extremely high quality like uh, physically based shading on them so you can see like the leather cracks and the cloth on clouds shirt has like this really great texture to it and that plays really well with the the general artificial spotlights in the game mm -hmm. where there's there's not obviously like a lot of sunlight or moonlight even it's a lot of just artificial lighting man-made lighting which gives you these crisp shadows generally on Cloud and all the character models, which are also really well shown off in the in-game cutscenes, which there's a, quite a few in, in this little demo. The nature of the setting really forces uh, Square Enix's hand in terms of you know how they deal with lighting. I mean, the Midgar slums are beneath this metallic plate, but it looks amazing. Like I, I just you know stood on the spot and sort of walked around, just looking at how dynamic these shadows were. A bit of dithering on like the edges. Yeah, there's some interesting thing where I don't know if it's playing with the temporal anti-aliasing well, but occasionally it looks like the the shadow map rendering plays strangely with the temporal anti-aliasing and it ghosts and dithers in a strange way that I'm not used to seeing in a lot of games actually. So I'm curious what's doing that. And actually, on that note, we should say that PS4 and PS4 Pro visually, you know, they both have this effect and actually across the board, outside of resolution, they're the same. You know, there's no visual differences. This isn't picking on either platform is just the nature of the game itself but it looks great and really the, the shadows look great from a distance as well you know it's a big upgrade again over the very basic circle shadows of the original like traversal segments of the ps1 game another big upgrade i kind of think other than the fact that the the environments are now th real-time 3d with you be able to move the camera around them is kind of the introduction sequence into it all of the cinematic where it flips over from a pre-rendered fmv with i would say slightly higher quality models and a lack of like lod switching like as the camera zooms in following the train and then as it switches over to real-time gameplay when it goes through like a bit of like I think smoke or something emanating from the train. It's very clever. Do you reckon Alex that that is the precise moment they do the magic work there? I, I have to imagine that's the only one because it's the, the only time the screen gets obscured for long enough mm. for it to occur. We see it a lot um, like it reminds me of Hitchcock films where the, he was obsessed with doing one take films exactly, and they, right? they disguise it by like going through a dark area <laughs> but, yeah yeah it's uh very similar to that uh probably not as good as lost odysseys if you remember that from like the xbox 360 yeah. area but you know really smart use of fmv there what i'm assuming is just done to hide the loading that, i mean it is a, a really good tribute to the original game because this is the only you know it's an eight gigabyte install and they've packed in a very high quality pre-rendered cg moment like uh, maybe uh let's say 40 seconds long or so 
which will have taken up a, a chunk of that eight gigabytes. But this is really, you know, staying consistent with the original, like blending a CG moment with an in-game moment. And we saw it across the original game where this was like a novel, charming thing that they did in 1997 to show off what you could do with the hardware. So it's cool to see it kind of being revived in a fashion here and we'd switch to in-engine gameplay with cloud on the station platform and you can just play suddenly. Yeah, one thing that's uh, interesting that obviously was not kept is kind of like uh, both the gameplay and how it's done. Uh, like now when you're moving around in real time, slashing, you can do a slight pause to use certain like commands and effects like throwing a fireball. But at the same time, uh, you know, as you're doing this, there's like particles flying everywhere, like physics boxes and physics objects can also be acted upon while you're engaging in gameplay. But I guess the one thing that I was less impressed with in the demo, if we're just to talk about it from a personal perspective, was, I mean, it's the beginning of the game, so it's not, I can't imagine there's an immense Oh, I know where this is going. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a very kind of simplistic gameplay beat at the moment, like without all the powers and without the higher RPG elements broken into it. So like, that's the one thing in the demo that is a little bit, hmm, it's different than the original, but it's also enjoyable in its own right. I would say in its defense that the yeah. game really needed that simplicity to wean people onto the combat mechanics, which, you know, we're very experienced, I guess, at playing yeah. games generally. Sometimes we take that for granted and to yes. help newcomers broach this, you know, what could be a very complex RPG later on. Yes, uh, they, they will need that uh, sort of gradient of difficulty. They did the same thing in Final Fantasy XIII, actually, where it, uh, maybe it took too long to yes, you know, that, get like, to that point. Yes, that first two-hour bit of Final Fantasy XIII. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. I mean, there were, there were tutorials in Final Fantasy XIII you know, about yeah. 10 hours in. So. so they're doing the same sort of thing here, you know, combat tutorials. But still, what, what we're getting is pretty cool. I mean, in terms of yeah. the combat, it, extremely responsive, first of all, more direct than the Kingdom Hearts 3 in Controls. Uh, mm -hmm. which was largely navigated through menus and you know I really enjoyed the crunch of the combat you know every yeah. attack has loads of amazing particle effects which light up the scene and swapping between Cloud and Barrett is really, you know, really slick and responsive that did look very cool yeah. and I, I'm not a huge fan of um, necessarily going to the command menu where you know everything slows down it's a cool effect to have that matrix style you know blur mm -hmm. as everything just crawls to a halt yeah. but it does it's, it's, kill the momentum a little bit, you know. But yeah, it's a kind of like a compromise for the real time versus, you know, obviously non real time nature of the last game's gameplay or of the, the original's gameplay. But in general, I think a very good demo shows off how they used Unreal Engine 4 in an incredible way to kind of re render this game as our minds might have imagined it back in 1997. And uh, I was very impressed. I think that's all we've got for now. Just a quick breakdown of all the elements that make up this demo. Thanks so much for joining me, Alex. Of course there, Tom. Anytime. Now, obviously, we've got a bit of time before the April 10th launch, and there's a few things that could be changed, a few things polished on PS4 and PS4 Pro, but right now, it's looking really polished, and I'm happy with what we're seeing. So, until then, I guess, we'll leave you there. Thanks for watching. If you did like this video, feel free to like or subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. It's an extra step, I know, but you can get notifications as any new video lands that way. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch with me and Alex and the rest of the team, just use Twitter. But from the both of us for now, thanks for watching. If I couldn't, believe me, you'd be the first to know. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Cloud! Okay, that was pretty cool. All right, come on.